Hello everyone, my name is Michael and welcome back to Sovereign Gaming. Today we are back in SimCity and this episode is one that is very necessary before building onto the rest of the SimCity region and that is of course establishing as you can see here a little bit of a rail line. Now in my head this rail line would have been probably a former freight line that was repurposed into a passenger rail line. But because it is such a big and uh, significant piece of the infrastructure in the world build in its entirety, it was something that I really had to uh, kind of get out of the way here. And the reason why I really wanted to actually include rail into this build is because I feel like rail kind of gets a little ignored. Um, and I don't blame anyone for ignoring it either because it's really not a significant part of the gameplay for one and secondly the assets aren't great like you can see here that I'm having to sink an entire bridge down onto ground level and then the tunnels that connect are they're not they're kind of bulky um, I have to say they're they're very bulky and sort of difficult to work with but that's exactly uh, why I need to start with it now is because everything here helps to inform the scale of the rest of the city. And that's another reason why I started on the port area as well is just to kind of get a feel for what the scale is going to be. My plans for the rail are actually quite ambitious in that I want it to extend throughout the port area and also throughout the Old Town neighborhood, which we will begin uh, building just a little bit of it today. Like we barely kind of scratch the surface, but I get a general layout for it. And, um, and yeah, so it extends through a little bit of the Old Town neighborhood, descending again into a tunnel. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have the train tracks emerge again in the middle of the downtown into some sort of a central station build. Uh, something that is interesting to note, and it was something that I did experiment with uh, before I had blocked myself from using the edit in game mode was that you can actually build uh, a lot on the rail, meaning that you can uh, size out a lot within the create a world tool and actually build uh, within that lot and the rail line would actually still show up. So that is an aspect of uh, create a world that I thought was really excellent and it's going to work out really well for the eventual central station build as well as another um, build that I will be doing on top of the rails as well and more details on that will be revealed in, in the near future but yeah since I uh, accidentally well not accidentally but since I had purchased uh, some sims 3 store stuff uh, after I had installed create a world and started working on uh, the SimCity world it did block me out of uh, getting back into the create a world um, uh, sorry the editing game mode so uh, that's why <laughs> that's why we're not going to get a whole lot of builds out of this series uh, it, towards the beginning because it seems like the uh, <laughs> the program is just forcing my hand in terms of needing to um, <laughs> needing to build out the world first before building the lots. Since the rail line, or the rail lines, I should say, is such a significant feature of the uh, SimCity port and of the SimCity region, I would say, it does kind of force my hand in terms of how neighborhoods are going to be shaped. Uh, you can see here that I'm just kind of measuring out the length of the rail and how long I want it to be because I don't want um, I don't want the uh, land to run off into the horizon. I am actually going to have the land stop somewhere and uh, fill it out with more water eventually. But uh, but yeah, the 
significance of this rail project, much like the bridge, is that it really informs what shape the neighborhood is going to eventually take. Um, and that is more so speaking on the Old Town neighborhood as opposed to the port, because the port isn't, it's affected, but not to the extent that the Old Town neighborhood would be affected. So yeah, uh, pretty much as soon as I place these rails down, um, it it really, um, it's kind of, it, it's going to be there for, <laughs> for life pretty much, like with small adjustments, because these are so bulky and so difficult to work with, if I'm going to be completely honest, so I don't really want to make any major changes going forward. Um, who knows though, like what will happen at the end of this series, what goes on with the rail, but I am fairly confident that the last thing I ever want to touch again are these, um, are these rails and these tunnels. <laughs> so, um, that's a big thing there. So yeah, I, um, I decided to go ahead and finish up some of the road layouts here and as as you can see it'll extend up until Old Town and at this point in the episode I've really not decided what the, um, <laughs> what the border will be between Old Town and the port. That does get established later on though so if it's unclear like which parts are Old Town and which part is the industrial port. Don't worry, it is made clear in a future episode, probably the next episode, if I remember correctly with my recording. Um, but yeah, you can see that there is a bit of land that is a gap between the uh, rail and the avenue, or the north-south avenue going up and down Old Town and the port. Um, with the avenues, part of what I will do to help differentiate neighborhoods will be to actually decorate the avenues in the middle. So I've kept the spacing in between the two roads to represent the avenues, but also I've kept the spacing the same throughout the entire uh, city just so that I know exactly what I'm working with and I can space things out relatively evenly. Again, I'm not a perfect creator. I'm not uh, Michelangelo at this. so. The spacing is going to have to be tolerable, like if it isn't perfect, it probably isn't. <laughs> so um, I'm happy to live with that and um, and yeah, and unfortunately we don't get to decorating any of the avenues today, um, but it is going to be one of those differentiating pieces of infrastructure that helps to, um, that helps to establish that there is a different neighborhood and it's got a different look and feel and those avenues uh, once they're decorated, they will certainly serve that purpose, and I think it's served pretty, uh, pretty strongly, in my opinion. In the next episode, I will be doing a lot more detailed work around the uh, plateaus or the uh, tunnels, I guess, and the land that uh, backs up against them. Um, I just wanted to, in this episode, I really wanted to, again, get a sense of scale, like how much land uh, do I really want to give up to uh, communicate that there is a descending uh, piece of geography here. <laughs> and, um, and so, yeah, that's, uh, it, it is another big piece of infrastructure within the city. And you'll see how I play around with the... Um, with the tunnels and um, and the land that backs up against them. I actually think that it turns out quite nice and you kind of get a clue and a look and feel as to what I was going for and it gets even better in the next episode, in the next Create a World episode I should say. So that's something uh, you can look forward to um, is that journey and that change because I eventually do decorate it up, I even put in a couple of trees and uh, some billboards up on there as well just because it would make sense in this area since it is pretty much an offshoot neighborhood from the downtown core so yeah a lot of a lot of that kind of thought went into the tunnels and how it would actually integrate within the city
Remember when I said that I would be using these retaining walls a lot? Well, I definitely meant it. <laughs> um, the unfortunate thing about these retaining walls is that they didn't reach all the way to the bottom, so I had to double stack some of them at certain heights, which is annoying to say the very least. Um, but at the same time, like they were the retaining walls that I wanted to work with, so I wasn't too angry or frustrated, I should say, about doing that. Another thing about these retaining walls that I wish was a feature in here was the is to put like graffiti on there. You know how your Sims have the street art skills um, with the university expansion pack. Well, it would have been really, really awesome if we could get some street art and graffiti just on some of those walls. But again, this is an in-game object or sorry, uh, this is a create a world object, so that's not gonna happen, but I guess I can put it on a wish list of some kind. It's not like I'm gonna download a mod and boot up the create a world again after uh, <laughs> exporting this just to get some street art on there. So anyways, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Um, the retaining walls overall are not that difficult to work with in my opinion, and you can see that I use the property details window uh, to adjust like numbers and such so I'll just like copy and paste a number if I need to have it rotated a certain way or if I want the elevation to go a certain way as well. Oh and by the way I don't think I've mentioned this before but sometimes you'll see flashes of purple on there. That's really me changing between the grid mode and uh, and I guess the not grid mode in Create a World. Um, there are some advantages to using grid mode. I, I find that you don't need to adjust your heights. Um, it helps to um, it helps to stagger the movement of objects, so you can get a somewhat precise or somewhat consistent um, movement when you're moving objects around. Uh, whereas, like when you're out of the grid mode, um, it's more of like a free for all, and um, and the free for all mode helps with adjusting heights. It's something that is very intuitive for me to use. Like, I don't think it's the most intuitive uh, different modes for users, but for me, like, I'm so used to it now that I just like click in or click out whenever I need to do a certain movement or to place an object in a certain way. When it comes to different heights and terrain levels, um, again, retaining walls are really my secret cheat code to making it look presentable, but I also personally really like the look of a retaining wall as it butts up against a road um, directly adjacent to it. And I do enjoy different uh, levels introduced within the city. I did purposefully put the port, um, the port and the uh, old town neighborhood on a much uh, on a slightly lower level than the rest of the city because um, it would be closer to the shoreline and um, and when we use uh, when we get the avenues to actually descend down into the old town and port areas the terrain difference is actually kind of fun to play with like I'm, I'm not the greatest at it again <laughs> I'm not great with actual uh, adjustments of terrain heights but I really find that once the job is done, once I've got it looking the way that I need it to, that, you know, it adds a whole new uh, level of dynamacy to the, to the city and to the look and feel of the urban environment. In the water treatment, facility build that I did. I had mentioned that I wanted to give like a real sense of security to the port because people wouldn't just be um, going in and out. They would actually be checking in through security in an industrial port and they would actually have to request for permissions to have access to the area. So that's exactly what I am trying to convey here is just uh, with the railroad crossings um, because we don't have barriers as far as I'm aware. Again, if somebody knows better um, in that there is some sort of a road barrier, <laughs> feel free to leave a message uh, in the comment section below. But I felt that the railroad crossing barriers were good enough as is. And so I just paired them up with a shed and I really wanted to also um, 
use this kind of an awkward space to fill it in as a parking lot because um, with the parking assets uh, that came with university, I feel like um, <laughs> I feel like custom worlds really don't take advantage of the uh, parking assets enough. So I really wanted to use some of it here just to fill up that awkward space because I really had no plans to put in another lot in there. And I also just, you know, I didn't want to fill up the entire world completely of lots. Um, so, and a part of a reason why that is, is because I'm already anticipating that there are going to be a lot of uh, different residential and community lots that are going to fill up the entire SimCity build here. So I wanted to use some space just to uh, uh, just to make it parking uh, within the port area. I also feel like it made sense here too to have the surface parking. It's just butting right up against that uh, retaining wall and there's nothing else really going on. I do plan to use more parking lots throughout the SimCity build, like specifically I'm thinking that whenever I get around to doing a stadium build that I'll be using a lot more parking lots uh, for then. It, in my opinion it helps to really create a sense of place and it's so stupid because it's just parking lots right, it's just surface parking lots. but. In The Sims 3, like even in my lot builds, I like to take into consideration um, what the parking would actually be like in those builds. So um, I, I guess the last two builds weren't a great example of it, but um, for apartments, for example, like whenever I get around to doing an apartment or a condo complex of some sort, I will definitely be taking parking into consideration because that is something that is uh, realistic and uh, it's gameplay that our sims actually need otherwise they have their pocket cars which is fine but um but yeah parking is a significant piece of infrastructure in cities and i really wanted to convey that here in the port and i'll be conveying that other places where it makes sense as well i also love these fences as well, these barbed wire fences, they're not barbed wire, they're chain link fences. They pretty much match the color of the fences that I used in the sanitation, uh, sorry, the water treatment facility and also in the cement shoe factory. So I was really thrilled that they, uh, that I was able to find them here. And speaking of which, like objects are not easy to find in the Creative World tool at all. And you can see that sometimes I'm searching uh, for objects and then at this point I've just really given up on searching through the, uh, the database there because it sometimes crashes. Actually, it crashes often. So you know, I'm always like scrolling through the object database just to see like what's in there, what I can use and whatnot. So when I came across these chain link fences, I was really impressed with them because they are super easy to use. There's a long version, there's a short version, and then you've got like your single gates as well that you can add in if you really wanted to get detailed. For the most part, I just use these, um, these fences. I just use the medium and the long one because I'll have uh, a fence terminate off into a retaining wall, for example, so I don't really need to get too specific on that because it'll just kind of disappear into that wall. But yeah, um, these these fences are also going to be something that I will use uh, outside of the port region um, or the port neighbor, uh, the industrial port neighborhood. It'll just be something that is more uh, decided, like on the spot whether or not it's appropriate or not but i wanted to make sure that they had a significant presence outside of the lots and the fact that they match the other builds is just such a bonus and something that i really think brings the neighborhood together in that rustic industrial feel that feel that you need to pass security <laughs> and that nothing here is just left for someone to water, wander into
I also really, really love these crane assets that came with the late night expansion pack. I, they're just, they're just perfect. <laughs> they're just perfect to convey that this is a working port, an industrial container port, and that those, those uh, crates need to get taken off of the ship somehow, those heavy crates. And so that's what these cranes are here to exist for. I also love the look of these cranes in the overall skyline that is um, <laughs> that will soon be developed in the far future whenever uh, I get access to um, <laughs> to actually edit it in game after I export it. But the only problem with this um, with these set of cranes that I didn't actually fix in this episode, and I'm pretty sure that I might not have fixed them in the next Create a World episode. I might have, but they're facing the wrong direction um, because what's going to go right beside the uh, set of wharf buildings that you see there is actually a 64 by 64 lot and that and that lot is going to be a port lot so the port lots came with the island paradise uh, expansion pack and the port lots are just designed as like a launching pad for houseboats so it's something that's like functionally doesn't make sense in an industrial port like this, but I decided to include it because I'll pr likely put in a couple of other port um, lots so that you can actually have your houseboat travel down the water and whatnot. So I just wanted like a little more marine uh, activity uh, on the water. But yeah, it doesn't make sense uh, with the uh, <laughs> with the function and <laughs> and all of that. Maybe it does. Maybe somebody who's an expert can shed some more light on that. But anyways, the cranes end up facing the wrong way because the idea is that you would take the uh, container ports off of the off of the freight ship and you would place them in your um, in your port and to be loaded onto a truck. And so the truck loading area will actually be the port lot that I described before. So um, the actual uh, cargo ships would need to dock in where the wharf is actually uh, where the wharf object actually is so yeah the cranes are facing the wrong way but they do get fixed and i'm pretty sure that i fixed them during the upcoming uh port lot uh creation which is on the horizon uh to be published in the near future soon after this episode I'm very happy with the way that the SimCity port and dockyards have turned out. As a neighborhood, it, in my opinion, looks fantastic. And the parking lot that is just adjacent to that uh, retaining wall is certainly something, uh, certainly some vibes that I'm really feeling. It helps to establish like when it actually begins. Um, some other lots that are going to be going into the port include the uh, <laughs> include a port lot itself, and that will be one of the upcoming builds but also i plan to put the military base here as well just as a small little coast guard um both of those lots turn out really well those will be the last two uh lots that i actually build on camera since that was the time when the editing game mode stopped working for me but um <laughs> but again like i'll let you guys know so um, those would be the last two completed lots. And then there was a also um, another 64 by 64 lot um, on here as well. Or is it 50 by 50? I completely forget. But anyways, the film studio will be going there and that's going to sit right beside the cement factory uh, just north of it. So I figured that because uh, film studios are also uh, more tightly secured that it would make sense to go in this area. So you'd have to pass port security and then you would also have to pass like um, the film security personnel there. So it's all very secure, like each of the lots have their own security pretty much. And then you also have the neighborhood security. So you're not getting in unless you're meant to be there. And that's the exact look, feel and function that I want this working port to have. But anyways, I just wanted to thank you guys again for watching. And if you like this video, then feel free to like and subscribe for more. And I will catch you in the next one. Thank you again and enjoy the rest of your day.